Thank you very much for having me in this uh, very uh, prestigious and interesting forum. Uh, it's great to be in the company of uh, such um, esteemed speakers and to be following up with Dionysia, who is a member of Fireman with scientific knowledge that can really help the mobilization towards implementation of our green and digital transitions. Uh, can I ask the moderator to wave when I have two minutes because I usually get, you know. <laughs> okay, so I, I will try to put together the uh, sustainability transition framework on a European level. And I will start by saying that at the moment we are facing uh, four different crises, at least four different crises. Obviously the health crisis coming from the pandemic, but also the economic crisis, the economic recession that derives from the pandemic. And an even bigger crisis, a crisis that we've been warning about, we scientists for many years now, more than 30 years, the climate crisis, the extreme weather events, whose frequency increases and it's, uh, their severity also increases and this is costing lives and it's costing trillions of dollars every year around the world. It's impressive. And of course we have the biodiversity collapse. The collapse of the ecosystem services that our consumption and production depends on. Too many crises, too many crises and quite difficult to handle them all together. But the only way to respond to them and recover from them in a sustainable way is to holistically treat them. We have policies. The Sustainability Council has been on the policy agenda since the 70s. I'm not gonna go that far. I'm gonna just talk about the recent history. 2015, New York, September, 193 countries signing UN uh, Agenda 2030, 17 goals on anything that has to do with the environment, the economy, and the society, 169 targets, showing how we can get on a sustainable path in 2030. And a few months later, the COP21 in Paris, committing to restraining the increase in global temperature, average global temperature, to below two degrees Celsius compared to pre-industrial level. Then in 2018, the IPCC report, the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change, says that we need to restrain the increase in temperature to 1.5 increase. So we need to go beyond the two degrees because we do not have the technology to live in a world that is two degrees uh, Celsius um, increased temperature. We do not have the technology. This is important. It's not as if we can live in that particular ecosystem. We cannot. 2019, uh, UN uh, Climate Week uh, in New York, we present as the United Nations Sustainable Development Solutions Network the six transformations that will allow us to operationalize the 17 SDGs. And these transformations, you cannot see them on the slide uh, because I cannot click in there, but they concern education, they concern the digitalization, digital evolution to sustainable development, sustainable cities and communities, sustainable industry and decarbonization, sustainable use of land, food production, water and oceans, and of course, uh, um, investing in health and well-being. Six transformations that uh, basically transpose the way governments, ministries are structured 
and can allow governments to prioritize the implementation of the SDGs without having to refer to uh, 17 different priorities. These are too many for governments. That's why we gave them this blueprint. Then at the end of 20, uh, 20, 2019, we have the European Green Deal, four goals, climate neutrality by 2050, clean tech leadership by European companies, reducing pollution to protect humans and uh, human animals and plants, and of course, inclusiveness for the cohesion of the society, leaving no one behind. The European Green Deal is supported by one trillion, some of it coming from EU budget, some of it to be leveraged by public-private partnerships. And of course, the European Green Deal, together with the SDGs, need to be implemented in consistency with the European semester process, the six-month uh, review of each European uh, countries that provides recommendations about aligning different countries with regards to microeconomic policies. 2020, we have the coronavirus, unfortunately. We have short-term responses to protect the vulnerable, to protect SMEs from bankruptcy, to protect the financial sector from non-performing loans. But thankfully, we also got, have the medium-run plan. And this is EU Next Generation, 750 billion in addition to the MFF, the multi-annual financial framework, to be invested in the green and digital transition. Any invested, any investment financed by the EU uh, next generation has to be 37% climate related and 20% digital related. So even after this huge non-linearity of COVID, the growth strategy of Europe thankfully is the Green Deal. So we are on a green and digital mission. And this is what we are trying in 2021 because we work very closely with the Commission to, um, as UNSDSN Europe, uh, to operationalize the European Green Deal. So together with the nine different policies of the European Green Deal, including farm to fork, including sustainable agriculture, including climate action, including sustainable industry, including biodiversity protection, we are uh, looking at a very hectic announcement of policy and legislative um, efforts uh, in this year in order to operationalize the European Green Deals and the nine policies. The climate law, first time that we have a law for the commitment of 55% reduction in greenhouse gas emissions by 2030, and the reduction compares to 1990 emissions, and of course, the law is also there to guide the 2050 climate neutrality commitment. Then we have the EU taxonomy making explicit which investments are considered green, climate adaptation, mitigation, biodiversity protection, protection of water and oceans, and of course, um, uh, protection of ecosystem services. And together with the EU taxonomy, we have the proposal of the Corporate Sustainability Directive that details how companies, businesses should report their sustainability impact, their sustainability activities. And this directive makes the requirement of a sustainability report much broader, much more inclusive. It includes many different kinds of businesses and all the businesses that are under uh, regulation. And it's also making explicit the monitoring. It, is dig it requires digitally tagged sustainability reports. So the requirements are much bigger. And of course, lately we had the 55, the 13 legislative proposals revising all regulations 
and even um, taxation um, structures in order to help Europe to get to 55 climate emissions reduction by uh, 2030. So we have a revision of all that has to do with mobility, regulations for cars, vans, marine time, aviation. We have uh, regulations with regards uh, to energy efficiency, regulation with revision of ETS, and so on. And of course, what is happening in Europe is happening around the world. Maybe not at, at such progressive stage. Europe is definitely the leadership example in all this, but a lot of countries around the world, and if you see my map, uh, are now in discussions for um, uh, making commitments and, and transposing them into legislation in order to be fit for 2050 climate neutrality. Unfortunately, the latest IPCC report shows explicitly that we are on a pathway of plus three degrees Celsius. So this is not good enough. We have to really sketch our pathways forward. I lead a cluster of sustainability transition engaging many institutions that I direct in research and innovation for the uh, development of the pathways for the sustainability transition, a laboratory at the Athens University of Economics and Business, a sustainable development unit at Athena Research and Innovation Center, climate kick from a European Institute of Innovation and Technology, financing technologies that can help in the acceleration of climate neutral economy and society, and of course, the Sustainable Development Solutions Network, which is a global network, the biggest in the world, that tries to communicate sustainability solutions that the universities and uh, research institutions develop to the rest of the stakeholders. Uh, the businesses, the financial sector, the politicians, the policy makers, the civil society. And we work in research and innovation, innovation acceleration, deep demonstration, education, training, and policy interface. My team has 150 researchers and more than 200 million in terms of research funding for mobilizing this development of the transition pathways. As SDSN Europe, every year we publish a report that showcases the transformations that are needed in Europe in order to implement together the SDGs and the European Green Deal. And last year's report basically connected the four major policy initiatives, the SDGs, the European Green Deal, the European Semester Process, and the EU Next Generation Fund in order to provide the policymakers with actionable strategies that can give guide to an EU-wide and national economic recovery in line with the European sustainability agenda. Our basic result is uh, that uh, beyond fiscal stimulus, that is expected to boost aggregate demand, this crisis calls for transformative public investments that will shape a sustainable, fair, green, and digital transition and leverage public sector investment. And in this report, we really show that the SDGs and the European Green Deal are consistent, although the SDGs are more holistic, the European semester process, which prioritizes the SDGs, is also in accordance, is also consistent with the SDG performance. Basically, we showcase for each case, for each country in Europe, the level of alignment between SDG performance, which we calculate in the sustainable development uh, report of UNSDSN, and we show that where a country is underperforming per SDG, the recommendations from the European semester process are really recommendations to increase performance in the underperforming SDGs, and the alignment is 72% on average in Europe. 
In order to make that transition, we need to detail the technological pathways. We need to know exactly which technologies are going to make the transition. And we need to perform these we need to perceive these pathways in a systems approach. The European Green Deal simultaneously addresses multiple objectives and promotes a mixture of policy instruments and technological solutions. And what we do in this report is that in a systemic framework, we showcase the pathways, the technological pathways, both for the energy transition, the land food systems transition, and also the mobility transition. And these pathways need to be supported by patient finance because we have the money, but we may need to make them explicit with regards to the technological pathways that we need to make. So we make recommendations with regards to the need for reconceptualizing our finance both at the macro level, European Investment Fund, European Investment Fund, at the meso level, the national public investment organizations and businesses, and I'm closing, and also uh, uh, be able to uh, communicate the performance of businesses, not just in terms of profit, but also in terms of environmental and social impact, and have these two together, not have two different um, uh, uh, narratives have the profit, uh, the profitability, social and economic and environmental impact on the same hybrid metrics. And finally, if you want to make the transition, you need inclusiveness, you need to create jobs. The European Green Deal will create jobs, more than one million in energy sector alone, but these are highly skilled jobs. So you need to have a huge investment in upskilling and reskilling, and you also need to make sure that the vulnerable that will be affected by the climate uh, regulation, there will be regressive effects from the climate regulation will be protected and you can protect it. We have done a big general equilibrium analysis and identified the measures that can allow Europe to implement climate regulations, but at the same time protect the vulnerable. Measures having to do with lump sum transfer, targeted energy efficiency measures, job retraining programs, and funding of subsidies. We show that you can do climate regulation and at the same time increase equity, increase employment and increase growth for all regions in Europe. I'm closing and I thank you for your patience with uh, our work as the Lancet Commission for COVID-19. This is the um, global commission uh, for the recovery of COVID. I lead the Green Recovery uh, Task Force and there we, uh, show, uh, we try to give guidance, not only at European level, but global level. And again, we say that the recovery packages across the world should finance the transformations that are needed for a green, digital, and fair future. And we need to increase funding devoted to the green and digital. At the moment, even in G20 countries, we don't have enough resources devoted to that. We need to engage the private sector because most money in the world is in private hands. The public money are not enough to make the transition. So we need clever public-private partnerships that will allow a fair, inclusive transition. And at the end, we recommend that the G20 should make steps for development financing of a green and digital and inclusive recovery. At the moment, we need to help the emerging market and the less developing countries that do not have this fiscal space to be able to engage in this transition, in the green and digital transition, and we recommend specific development financial instruments at the multilateral level that can do that. In closing, I want to say that we had the food summit. Uh, and the, the, the results of the food summit of the UN were very encouraging because they uh, talk about inclusiveness, engagement for sustainable food systems and technological driven um, uh, sustainability 
uh, solutions. We have the G20 summit. We are having in China, like Dionysia said, the UN uh, Biodiversity Summit. And we have in Glasgow uh, in November the COP. We should align the results of this four high-level forum in order to make sure that all the countries in the world have the fiscal space and the uh, capacity and the ways, ways of engaging all the stakeholders into this uh, transition. Thank you very much for your patience.